I don't know if that uh, music is supposed to uh, make you feel tense. <laughs> I, you would think it would be it would be more calming. Anyways, this is David. How's everybody doing? I'm good. David's doing pretty well. Nice. Right now we're on with uh, Zachary, with Paul, and with Kai. Is that how you say it? Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. So Zachary, Paul, and Kai, and this is David. Um, there were a couple other people who were talking about joining us. Um, so I don't know if we want to give them a few more minutes to see if they show up. But I thought I would go ahead and, in the tenseness of of that music, <laughs> and uh, kind of open up the space a little bit for us to talk a little bit before anyone else gets here today. How's everybody feeling? Just kind of want to go around for a minute and well, say what's up. I think you were right about the quality of the music there. It was kind of like, like oh, this is nice. And you're like, well, oh, but yeah, it's not very, it's not very relaxing, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spanish yeah. music is not that bad. Oh, it's, it was beautiful. It was just, it, it seemed like at first it was kind of calm and then it kind of like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> very, very much like some tense action music or something. <laughs> Maybe that's good. Maybe that's the kind of feeling, you know, you want to have before you go into this kind of group. <laughs> I, know, I think it's just Brian Eno on the whole music. I was listening to the radio just before we called in and, the student radio was playing some wonderful Brian Eno, cloudy day, rainy day music and we should have on some conference. Like nice. atmospheric. How you doing, Zach? Oh, feeling pretty good. It's my day off. Just uh Yeah, sitting here, dog sitting for my sister, keeping me company. Word, man. It's nice to uh, to finally speak with you. All of you. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. I feel like we've been kind of talking on the group and stuff for a while, but it's really nice to be able to to hear hear your voices. And so I'm really excited for um, the potential of kind of starting to try to open up this space and make more time for us to be able to come together and have more personal interactions. I think that'll be nice. Totally. Well, I guess um, it's been a few minutes, so I guess I'm just going to go ahead and start. Luckily, it's all going to be recorded, so if people show up late or they don't show up and they want to listen to the, the recording of it, they'll be able to to hear all of this on the record. So just so you know. Be careful what you say. It's on the record. <laughs> um, but, uh, got in the uh, little, this, this may be recorded, bleep. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So today, um, we're just going to be doing kind of a, an organized we space type of thing. We're going to be doing some brainstorming, getting on the same page, and hopefully inspired to some action. In the future... Um, with these integral leader meetings and stuff like that, we're going to be employing more uh, integral governance methods and practices and stuff like that. And uh, we have um, one of the one of the originators or, or creators of a, an integral governance method in our in our group. She's not with us on the call today. Her name is Cecile Green. And uh, I worked with her a little bit in um, in Vermont, up in um, in Burlington, and we did some integral meetings together there. And I got a little bit of training in her her system, which is kind of like holacracy. I don't know how familiar you guys are with that, but um, the idea is it's kind of based on. Um, processing tensions and her system was a pool because it 
I think it was more focused towards like business and, and, and organization. And, uh, I mean, I know whole, holacracy is too, but it seemed like she, she had more different types of, of conversations that you could have depending on what, um, what kind of problems that people are bringing up. I know that's all, (laughs) that's all very vague. But she's kind of got it broken down into a method with different kinds of cards and stuff. It can be a little bit strange jumping into that kind of a practice because, uh, and at least in my experience, it's not necessarily intuitive, and in, in, at least in not in not the way that um, you would want to talk about things, I guess, but it's, it's kind of designed to sort of help make sure that nobody can assert their personal kind of power dynamic over everyone else. And it's kind of a very like turn taking, um, kind of a process. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting if you can, if you can learn to, um, to sort of trust it and go with it. I think one of the things that I've learned from it is that it actually like works pretty well and you can move pretty fast. But when you start to go all meta on it and try to, to like deconstruct it while you work with it, it can, it can be kind of, <laughs> it can be kind of horrible. So, um, but uh, eventually I would like for uh, all the leaders in this kind of group to be uh, trained facilitators in in the integral governance method and so that way um, everybody has the ability to facilitate uh, the different meetings and stuff i i um i'm a leader in this movement but i'm not the leader in this movement i think it's important that we can come together with certain methods and practices so that way we can work together. And once we get some of those um, methods down, then, you know, it's, it's a, a practice that we can all take up. Cause I know that there are probably people who are better at facilitating uh, these types of, of meetings than I am. But today, because it's our first meeting and because uh, none of us are practiced at any of that, we're just kind of going to have more of sort of um, an open kind of conversation and we're going to just move through this agenda in kind of a free flow sort of way. What I had planned to do was to, oh, I'm sorry, what? Hello? Hey, hey Did David, can you repeat to... the name of the, um, the woman you studied with for the um, organizational teaching? Yeah, her name is Cecile Green, and her t- her type of practice that she does is called um, Collab. She has, I think, a couple of uh, interviews online. I can um, I can post some of that. I, I think there's even on your uh, on your YouTube channel, yeah. don't you? Yeah. I, yes, I think I do, and if not, I think I have already posted some of it in the group. But I can repost it in uh, in this in the thread for this meeting, and um, I can maybe even repost it in the group so we can be more fresh on some of that. And I'm sure she'll want to get involved and talk. Um, and I'll and I'll probably uh, say a little bit more about that a little bit later. But what I had uh, hoped to do today was to kind of um, to come and talk to you, to you guys about some of these ideas and these projects that I see like in in front of us now that um, I'm starting to work on that we've all been kind of working on and just kind of talk a little bit about what I see going on with that and uh, maybe to get you guys inspired to think about how you can work on those things or other things that uh, are related that might be more up your alley or up your skill set or trying to figure out how you can uh, bring your skills 
to the table on these things. And we can brainstorm about some different ideas related to some of these different areas. I was thinking um, maybe I could just do a quick sort of run through about what the different things are. And then if you want, we can, and, and after I go through my quick sort of run through overview, so you guys can know kind of all the things that I'm, I'm thinking. Then I was thinking I would sort of go through one by one through each of like the, the different uh, aspects a little bit more in detail. And then um, for each one, we could open it up to questions and comments on those, on each one of those aspects. And then once, once I'm done going through my three or four bits or whatever, then we would open it up and we could go around and you guys could bring some of your different ideas to the table and we could sort of do question and answer on some of that kind of stuff. And um, then probably uh, close it up. Close it up. But before we get into any of, of that kind of stuff, I thought it would be cool if um, we just went around kind of briefly. There's, it's still just us three in here right now. But uh, I thought it'd be cool if we went around kind of briefly and just sort of introduced ourselves to each other and talk a little bit about who we are, where we're coming from, what 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 brings us to this group, and what we might be passionate about uh, doing within it in, in terms of our skills and our our areas of knowledge and perspective that we might bring to the to the table. And just, you know, keep it brief, like two or three minutes, something like that. I will uh, demonstrate the way by by going first. You guys probably all know me a little bit. Um, my name is David Long, and right now I'm in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I'm really interested in how I can figure out how to bring the important um, bring integral to, to work on some of the important stuff that I see going on in the world. And that's why I'm really concerned with making all these distinctions and helping integral try to be the best that it can be. So, um, you know, I want to, I want to make art and try to try to make a more robust culture around, around, uh, integral and these different ideas and uh, make it more into a lifestyle and figure out ways that we can come together and bring it to the world. And um, that's, uh, that's why I come to this group and that's what I'm super passionate about. Um, what do you think, Paul? You want to go next? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. So my name is Paul Goddard. Um, generally been living in Reno, Nevada, but I recently, literally just recently moved up to Vancouver, Canada. Uh, so I moved out of the country of a dual citizen. Um, and I didn't move out for Trump or anything like that. I just love it up here. <laughs> um, I, I always get that question. Uh, so let's see. So I got interested in integral 10 years ago or so. I got a degree in anthropology and I'm quite studied on psychology and all that. Um, Let's see, I also have a background in electronics, and that's kind of the profession I do is fix electronics. Um, yeah, I, was, I think I started in all this. I just started having spiritual experiences and whatnot, and I started wanting to try to integrate that into the world, and that's how um, I'm a modern. I was brought up fairly secular, so uh, that's what brought me to Integral is just how it's integrating all that stuff. And with an anthropology degree, I just loved it, um, and psychology and all that stuff. It tends to integrate everything. Um, I went to a few integral meetings around like Sacramento area. Um, one in Houston, actually, I did a, I was a travel tech for a while. So I went to meetup groups everywhere and tried to hit all the integral meetups that I could and ended up being quite new agey um, in my experience there. So, and actually I was, when I first had started having my spiritual experiences, I was fairly new agey in the beginning too. So I kind of passed through that. Um, yeah, I started, you know, noticing. I've read Integral, I've read, you know, Wilbur and all that stuff, uh, at least enough. And I kept on hitting all this New Age stuff, so I started getting a little frustrated um, with that because I, I had, at some point, moved on, moved into. I'm pretty much a. I would consider myself a humanist now. 
And um, so really, to me, integral still remains the, the best option for as, as far as some sort of philosophical structure as far as in the world that I can tell. Uh, but I definitely was frustrated with, with some of the, the senses of the, um, I don't know, going a little too far in, in poetic interpretations and just a, just a hint of it, right? So that's why I was really interested in this group, that it, it seemed to get those distinctions, uh, in my opinion, um, right. It, it's the perfect blend of, to me, everything Integral has to offer, uh, still allowing all spiritual experiences and, and poetic interpretation and things like that uh, without going too far. So, yeah, so that's me. Nice. It sounds like you're in the right pl- place, brother. That makes me no. <laughs> that makes me happy. I, feel, I, I definitely feel a resonance with what you're saying around that. Hmm. Hi, you want to go next? Oh, thanks, David. Um, yeah, my name is Kai. I'm currently living in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, Integral is basically the belief system that I was raised with. Uh, my parents are students of Ken Wilber. I listened to the Cosmic Consciousness this tape when I was 16. Um, so I've been going to the Integral Theory conferences and really enjoying the people that I meet there. I'm not particularly partisan, and I, I I really I get what you're saying, David, and I actually have a lot of respect for the distinctions that you're making because I think that there is a lot of lazy thinking in the integral community. You know, it can very easily turn into this guru thing that we've been seeing and arguing about on Facebook for the last six months or so, um, for years. I don't know. I've only been a paint in terms of the last six months. So uh, this is pretty cool. I am currently unemployed and studying to become a web developer to develop those skills. So I'm looking for projects that I can get involved with. I am reading some books about organizational theory, and I'm going to be studying with Benita Roy in Connecticut next month, um, taking her class on open participatory organization. Nice. Very cool. Thank you. So it looks like we are joined by Al Josa. Is that right? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. Cool. Wait. Um, do you have the phone on speaker right now? Um. Yeah, I do. Uh, can you hear yourself? Yeah, that's gonna cause feedback. So if you can. Okay. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna put it on headphones. I just okay. need to find out. Uh, right wait now, a minute. Okay. okay, I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna mute you for a second, and uh, I'm gonna tell you real quick what we got going, and then I'm imagining by the time that I'm done telling you that you'll be back and maybe ready with your headset on. Right now, we're just kind of passing it around, and we're doing like a real quick. Um, introduction like hi my name is this is this is why i'm passionate about coming to the group and these are some of the skills and or knowledge or you know passions that i bring to the table and these are things that i um i might want to get into just kind of like introducing yourself and giving your basic intention you want to go ahead and uh, are you ready for that yeah sure can you hear me yeah, go right ahead. Oh, okay. So uh, my name is Alyosha. Uh, so I I wasn't here the first ten minutes, uh, but I'm not from I'm not from the states. I'm actually from Europe, from Slovenia, and I'm I'm one of the rarest, maybe if maybe not the only one who's actually integrally informed in my country. I presume there are more people, but uh, nobody knows about it. Nobody knows about it yet. Um. So I'm 30 years old. I live in a capital capital city, and most of my integral experience was pretty much self-taught because, like I said, I didn't have any any anybody else to really lean on, and I I was met with integral theory probably five six years ago. I I happened to saw an interview on YouTube. It was uh, Ken Wilber talking about um Eckhart Tolle and he talked about shadow and I was really interested in in, in interested in depth psychology those six years back and 
I was also wondering uh, back then how spirituality is connected or not connected with um, uh, deep psycho psychological work. And uh, Wilbur really impressed me when he said that you can have this um, uh, spiritual experiences, and yet that doesn't make that doesn't make you emotionally or you know um, uh, personally healthy. So you can have your issues even though you have your spiritual experiences. And he was the first. Ken Wilber was the first person who, for me, who actually even talked about those those things because uh, all the New Age things I I read, it was just the idea that your consciousness, you are free to do whatever you want. You can bypass your um, psychological issues by just meditating, meditating and stuff. And uh, this is how I, w I I went in. And at the beginning, I didn't understand what Wilbur was talking about, but eventually. I started reading a few of his book, books I found on the inter internet and, you know, some talks on YouTube and um, it just felt right to me. And now I'm here where I am. Uh, is there anything else I should say? Uh, any other questions? No, I mean, uh, okay. welcome, brother. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm thank glad you, that, you. You're, that you're here with us. Thank you. Um, exactly. Yeah, and um, also... Ahead. Yeah, um, I also feel like the 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 integral in, in original Ken Wilber form does seem to be a bit more idealistic, and I like your approach, and I found your videos to be very helpful helpful because I do feel there's this split uh, between more idealistic and materialistic points of view, and it just seems to me, at least I feel that materialistic seem to be more um congruent with the truth than the idealistic versions um um yeah so i i found your videos very, very helpful and also the group yeah Oh, well, thank you brother i appreciate that um yeah i'm glad that uh some of my work resonates with you and uh, i do think that you know these uh these distinctions are important and so you know other people like Frank Visser and, and people like this have been also doing this work for a real long time. They just haven't been making videos and stuff. So um, if you if you haven't if you haven't gone to Integral World and looked at some of that stuff yet, I would suggest you check out some of the some of the scholarship there too. Um, it might not be as as, as shiny and, and colorful, but <laughs> there's some there's some good stuff on there. Yeah. Um, Zach, do you do you want to uh, say a few words? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I'm uh, 26 years old and grew up in a Mormon household. Uh, four bro for three brothers, one sister, uh, second youngest. Uh, yeah, uh, my dad was a uh, police officer as I was growing up, so that was, that was uh, interesting. Gave me an interesting. Uh, authoritarian perspective on the world and oh uh, man <laughs> yeah no that but it it was a good it was a good situation it was just an interesting perspective but anyways uh, pretty much whole family ended up getting disillusioned with the uh, mormon church so we're uh everyone's doing pretty good but you know that kind of, but still the whole realizing that there's that other realm of you know, spirituality that isn't colored by, um, you know, all that major bullshit is, <laughs> just to put it frankly. <laughs> it's a, it's nice to be able to, like, view that from a rational perspective and not, uh, you know, as probably most of you are aware, there's some pretty crazy things in the Mormon ideology that just doesn't quite make sense, so. But, yeah, that's pretty much me. I, uh, I'm attracted to integral because it just seems like a th solid foundation for taking different perspectives and you know kind of comparing and contrasting and and I think there's a lot of promise to it. Yeah, I think a lot of the the methodology is really good. I kind of I kind of feel like in some sense where we wind up in a lot of these uh, mystical idealistic kind of places it's almost like you know these different integral leaders including ken wilbur are like breaking the rules of the basic theory it's like they're not really 
integrating all the quadrants or their like you know bias towards particular spiritual practices and they're taking things literally i mean you know without going off too much on a rant and to try to stay focused on this stuff i do think that you know it is kind of this is one of the themes that i that i kind of talk about in in my videos is it feels like a lot of the spiritual perspective the reason why I feel like it's kind of immature is not just like the wishful thinking and the, the human centric kind of uplifting and like these ideas of a soul and an afterlife, you know, the fear of death and all that. But it seems to think that like nature and reality, the world that we live in is like, it's just like not enough for them. They, they, to be enlightened, they have to have some kind of like magical powers or something like that. And I mean, I do think that we can develop more skills and, you know, hopefully be able to do things that might look like magic powers to some people, but you know, all that stuff is natural. And I really feel like that's like a, you know, a, a healthy type of spirituality. It's not superstitious and it appreciates the, the natural world and sees the beauty in it as it is to like say yes to life even though it hurts without having to like say oh well in heaven it's, or in perfection it's all good well so I think it's about like being mature and appreciating it for what it is but anyways <laughs> that's a little bit ranty a yeah. little bit preaching to the choir but Maybe it's a good it's a good kind of place to transition from there. Um, yeah, and I feel like a lot of people here are probably at that same same stage of, you know, we can appreciate what is without having to wonder about what might be. Right, totally. Yeah, and you know, I think that also there's a maturity in keeping the mystery a mystery, without having to act like you know things you don't know. Right. Let's see. All right. I'm glad we're all resonating around those things. That's a beautiful thing. It's it's probably a bit of catharsis, too, because there's so much argument in our community around these things. And it's a good thing about this kind of a we space to be able to get together and speak passionately about these topics with other people who resonate with you. And it's it's more like, yes, <laughs> and that's so nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly sort of run through the different topics that I'm going to talk about real quick, and then I'm going to come back to the top. I'm going to talk about you know, the first one, and then I'm going to open it up for questions and comments, and we'll kind of brainstorm through this. And then when we're done with my few things, then we'll open it up and we'll go in, in circles and we'll see what other kind of things you guys have to offer. Okay, so some of the things I want to talk about today are going to be um, governance, this um, collaborative leadership, um, what it means to be a member and a, and a leader, you know, are there, are there going to be dues, are there going to be, you know, um, certain people are going to be taking certain roles. I want to keep it like pretty open so that way people can participate at their in their own uh, within their own schedule and their own limits and stuff like that. And I think that there are going to be ways that we can, we can work with including more perspectives and, and still having like particular leaders on particular pro projects. We need to um, make more clear our, our uh, methods and, and stuff like that. So that's got to be something that's fleshed out. Um, this maestro conference the next thing I want to talk about is like um, the, web, the, the, the the getting a web page going, right? So both of those things cost money. So some kind of dues, um, Patreon, maybe through Patreon or something like that. I could get some kind of thing like that going. Like I don't mind footing the bill for a minute, but ultimately I think you know if we if we're all passionate about these things, if we're all um, 
<laughs> if we're all c- caring about trying to make these things happen, investing a little bit in it that we can afford, that we're comfortable with, is going to help us have more funds to work with and get you know get these things going, and that's going to be um, exciting. Uh, let's see. So there there have been some cool stuff. I think I think it would be awesome to figure out some kind of a philosophy forum type of situation. Uh, maybe maybe one that's better than what we got going on the Facebook thing, where we can better keep track of threads. There's some really interesting stuff already happening in terms of uh, trying to work re- remapping the upper left and upper right correlations. Like Zach has done done some cool stuff on that, where he's like started to make some images and stuff, and I'm really excited about that work. You know, there's other other issues that need to be addressed addressed too. So not just the tetra rising and stuff, but you know, um, the terminology of things like gross, subtle, causal, and non-dual. What do we think about the second and third tier stages of development? Um, more uh, definitions around like transrational and vision logic and stuff like that. The thing that we need to to get going is going to be some kind of a IERM handbook, and that's going to include my long view, some kind of mission statement, some of these distinctions that we're talking about above. Um, the basics of our methodology and integration and maybe some kind of book about uh, what integral integrity looks like some of these distinctions that we want to that we want to see in terms of how we we um, practice this stuff in the world just sort of fleshing out more of the distinctions on the cutting edge of what of, of what it is to be integral in practice um, we should also talk about how you can get involved in your own local integral sangha or we space at whatever level. And then I want to talk about the different media that I'm going to be working on. Like uh, I want to make a video talking about our distinctions of like a basic invitation video. There's this Steve McIntosh situation. Um, we do have a, a YouTube page. Um, so if if you guys have any ideas about video and media that you want to contribute, um, that like that's a that's one of the things that would be great for more people to do to make more media. Uh, I have a, a series that I want to do on uh, different pre-trans pre- uh, interpretations of different traditions. Like I want to talk about. Um, Christianity and Jesus and talk about a pre-rational interpretation, a rational interpretation, and a transrational interpretation. Do that with like um, Buddha and enlightenment and tarot cards and, you know, just kind of go through the main, the main sort of new age things and talk about how people think about it in a pre-rational way, how people think about it rationally and how people think about it transrationally, just so we could make some of these distinctions and demonstrate them. I really want to do like some interviews with um, Cecile and I want to do like different ones for the inside of our group and for the outside of our group. Like with Cecile, I would make one about governance and we could ask her a bunch of questions that are going to be more relevant to us as people in the group. And then I'd also like to do some interviews with people about um, what it is to have this perspective and how and why they think what they do in, in about the integral community at large. I think it'd be cool to get her, maybe Don Beck, if we could get Frank Visser on there, maybe Michael Dowd, um, Julian, that'd be awesome. We just need to get more like events and debates and maybe conferences, we need writings and podcasts and interviews just to kind of like get the stuff happening in the community, you know, Reddit, whatever it may be. Um, Zach and I were talking that long ago about um, some kind of a fictional uh, story or world. We were, we were not 100% sure of what maybe a different kind of medium it could, it could take, but just kind of ways to maybe put people into uh, the perspective of the kind of changes that we want to make instead of just writing books about it theoretically to actually kind of show them with fiction and drama and to flesh out some of the ideas like that. 
so that's kind of my uh, that's my basic overview of these different topics. Like um, the so we can go back to the first one now. Um, in terms of of governance and collab and um, dues and leaders and roles and participation and methodology, does anyone have any kind of um, questions or ideas about any any of that? Also, before before we before we get into that, I noticed that uh, Newt Gingrich has has joined us. Who is this Newt Gingrich? Hey, it's Lyman. Hey, Bud, how you doing? Good. <laughs> I like your, uh, your alias, brother. Uh, I was just doing a piece of writing on rationality and politics, so I thought I'd keep that ball rolling. Right. Well, um, let's see. So I think you jumped in while I was blah, blah, blahing, going over my long list of things that we were going to talk about. Let me uh, let me just sort of catch you up to to where we're at real quick. Basically, we just kind of had some some talks about what we're doing uh, this week, and we're kind of just brainstorming. Um, I just I just as you heard made a long list of things I want to talk about, and they're kind of broken into um, small categories like the one I just uh, mentioned was about uh, governance. I had previously mentioned that uh, in the future that I wanted to try to apply some integral governance methods and some of that kind of stuff, but we're not really any of us trained or ready for that right now. So right now we're kind of just doing a more open style kind of lease space, get together and talk and brainstorm and resonate kind of thing. Sure. But, um, so I'm about to I'm about to open it up to uh, questions and comments about these these particular subcategories. So right now um, I'm I'm asking about governance and um, ideas around membership and dues and roles and rules and methods and this um, maestro conference thing and. Um, and where we're and where we're going to be going with that. So eventually, we're going to have to have um, some kind of way to in integrate in new members into our into our leadership and into our process, right? So that's going to be something that's going to take uh, take a little bit of time, and it's going to be something. Um, only time will will tell who is really. Um, driven and able to put in the the time to be this you know to be this kind of a leader or this kind of a member but i do want to try to make it um, open and flexible so a bunch of different people can get involved whether they can come to every meeting or not like different people can kind of take on different roles and responsibilities and we can figure out how to to process those tensions and hopefully some kind of a skillful way to bring this movement more online in a more systematized, focused kind of way. Does anyone have any kind of questions or comments about that? Uh, I had a question. question. I guess just a base, just a basic one. I've I've read a little bit. I think of things that you've written about um, just governance principles and things like that. So collab and holacracy, because uh, I need to study up on it. Those would be two, just those keywords. Search, search into those. That'd be a good place to start to educate myself more. Yeah, and earlier I was saying, yeah, I think that's that is a good start. Um, earlier okay. I was saying something about how uh, later I am, and, and maybe this just a, a point of process. Um, in the future, if we're just opening it up like um say hey this is paul or whatever so i know who i'm oh. talking to <laughs> right but um but uh yeah i'm going to post some videos about that and and she's in in our group so you can always ask her any kind of questions and i know she's got some media and some videos and i'll be posting that kind of stuff let's just go around a little bit was that was that paul i was just talking to that's right yeah paul okay yep 
Um, and just just to let you know, I've got to leave in like 15 minutes. Just to let you know, I got to go back to work. <laughs> oh dang, man. Well, yeah, no. one of the things I was going to do, you know, after we post the um, the audio from this is I was going to, uh, op- you know, post it in the group and invite other people to listen and um, post comments about any kind of ideas or comments or questions that they might have later. So if you do have to, to bounce out, you can check the audio and definitely comment back and still participate later if you want. Okay, cool. Cool. I'm going to pass it to uh, Kai. Um, I'm not sure what to say at this point. I mean, you seem to be asking if we can expect people to pay dues for membership or a like, stake in leadership of this brand is the closest word I can think of to describe what we're doing here. I mean, I can see that you're definitely creating value by having a YouTube channel which gets media out there. Uh, where people might stumble upon it and start thinking about these ideas. Um, but I think, yeah, I I don't know what to say about... Well, I, uh, I hope to actually have... Um, the reason the reason why I would, I would maybe ask for dues, and it wouldn't have to be a certain amount. It could just be like, I'll make a Patreon page and, you know, maybe maybe something... If if we do go small, like five dollars a month or two dollars a month or something like that, something affordable, because I'm pretty pretty poor myself, and I don't think that that would that would even necessarily be, you know, like required or anything like that. But the reason I would want it well, is me... because things like this Maestro Conference are forty five dollars a month, and we're going to be um, hopefully trying to create a web page, which would be like the new kind of integral hub. Uh, so, to, so like we That's could cool eventually idea. transcend the uh, the Facebook format and try to to you know not just and I I talk about it a little bit in that main video that I have at the top of the group, but kind of like the the hub would would not only be like a like a a place for to go for all things integral in terms of information but it would be like our main resource for being able to um, start the integral movement, which is not just going to be some kind of internet phenomenon, but has to sort of take root in like real world um, integral uh, sanghas and meetups. And, you know, like yeah. we need to, we need to like build like actual networks and, and groups in the real world too. And so having some kind of a central hub for us to be able to meet up and to share resources and information and to, and to build this kind of a, a network. That's like at the beginning stages of like the next uh, aspect of this, of this movement, like the, the long view as I see it is about, you know, realizing where we're at now, what we have to work with now, but also trying to project this movement into the future. Cause it's not just, it's not just a brand, and I don't want it to just be about bringing these ideas and criticizing the integral movement. That's where we're at right now because we're trying to challenge integral and and separate the sort of wheat from the chaff to find people who are sort of on our side of the thing and are tired of integral, the brand, and want to actually see integral, the movement. So it can't just be about talking about these distinctions eventually has to take action in the world and that's where we're going to have to have money for this web page for these integral like if we have if we have these dues when we come out with these handbooks we can send those handbooks to all these different we spaces you know we can actually make those into tangible things but eventually we have to figure out how to to make some money at least enough for it to um, move itself forward. And I'm not sure um, exactly how to do that in terms of setting an amount or something, but if we could all give a little bit that we feel comfortable with, I think we could probably we could probably make a lot of progress. But I'm gonna um, pass it off to, there was somebody else who wanted to say something yeah, before I kind uh, of cut them off. Go ahead. No, it's all right. No, yeah, I think it's uh, 
as a fellow core person, I think it is realistic to say that um, you know we do need to um, things that we do need to talk about is ways to generate the sort of revenue that would be required to um, you know just maintain operations. Like I said, it's the like the Maestro conference here is going to be an expense and printing costs for any physical uh, media and you know just time spent on any sort of like digital media. So. Yeah, I think that's something that, I mean, you've worked on it quite extensively, and I think there's more that we can do for just, uh, you know, like either related arts or not related arts. I think we we should be able to brainstorm about that. Now, yeah, and I'm a, pretty I, open. Go ahead. Uh, I was wondering, are, do any of you guys know people who work on Integral Life, the website? Because that is a paid subscription space. Um, I think it's $7 so there's a market a month out there for people who want to pay for it, and yeah. uh, I was wondering if you're anticipating that we would be able to be connected with that, or if you would see this as being sort of aloof and separate. Like, do you, no, do you have contacts in the life where we could get them to advertise for this? Yeah, I would like to eventually, you know, think about it. I guess in some sense, like transcending and including them. When I think about going to the integral hub for all things integral, I would definitely count that as part of all things integral. And so I don't want to uh, exclude them. I definitely yeah. want to try to work with them and, and to invite them at the same time as like, we want to, I think, challenge them and debate them. I do think we want to still be like, we are all are still like looking at the same map. There are parts of it that we disagree about. But, you know, we're not just going to be upset and argue with you about it. We're going to figure out how to demonstrate the way and, you know, come together and make these distinctions uh, as well. Well, we should try to appeal to the same market. Let's try to get some of the people paying $7 a month for Integral Life to also pay for this website we want to build. I think that's right, you know, and I think that we can be cheaper than them, cheaper and better. Because I think we can not just offer media but and, like, courses and stuff like that, but I want us to figure out a way to have affordable events and figure out how we can all get some, some local WEF-based integral stuff happen in our own local area. So that's going to be something that I want to challenge you all to as well, is to figure out if there's something going on where you're at to get involved and or to start one and and get that going. But is there any more um, questions about governance or uh, membership or anything like that? Well, I think I think as, as long as we keep it uh, kind of relaxed and informal at first, then we should be able to flesh out exactly what where we all specialize in the most and uh, yeah, what exactly yeah. is the best. I think that'll be kind of the cool thing to see is, is that it'll sort of just happen naturally. Exactly. Especially if you have like a, a skillful process that kind of works with the way that these things work anyways. I think you know, people will find themselves in the roles that they're interested in and passionate about. And I really want to make um, the ability to enter into leadership, like, very open for everyone. You know, any like, I want you to be integrally informed, and there's, like, certain, you know, basic standards and stuff like that. I think that once we get the process of uh, being in the governance system, up and going and it's like a, a moving process I think it would be good for a new person to like maybe sit in on one or two meetings before they get actively involved so they can have a better understanding of the process but I mean for the most part I think making it open and figuring out a way to to get connected at different levels and different scales that's going to be actually the biggest challenge of this type of governance is figuring out how to make it work at different fractal levels where they can communicate with each other in like a holonic kind of way with like information coming from the bottom up and top down. 
so that's actually something in integral governance that has never been done before at least not to my knowledge so that's going to be like a major major upgrade on the emergentist side there's tons of stuff to argue about about the theory and all that kind of stuff on the revolutionary side one of our main tasks is going to be able to build this system and this governance and these governance methods and stuff and refine it in a way where it works on its own that's that's going to be like that's going to be the main the main thing because once you can get the the system going once you get it in, in practice in the world you can't stop it there's no person you could kill <laughs> to to stop it it doesn't even rely on a single person it's just an idea this time has come so if we can plant that seed and water it and help it grow there will be a new integral world with integral governance and leadership let's talk about um, thing to say. <laughs> i'm glad you think so i think it i think it could be a beautiful thing too so this this website, I think it would be really good to, um, to, like I said, kind of have the inside and outside. You know, the the outside is kind of for regular people who come for media and for you know to to see what's going on, and then there's sort of a membership inside kind of part that might be more for people who um, for people who pay like a small amount per per month or something like that. And that'll help them get access to um, the integral, the integral web, which will be like local Wii spaces and different, you know, integral people who are in their community, different integral events that are around, you know, and um, help help us to figure out how we can all kind of plug in and and like we, you know weave this uh, weave this web. And really, that's going to be like if you think about it like churches and you know stuff like that the way that christian artists and musicians or, or authors can tour around and uh, sell their wares and have their things is because there's there's these tons of traditional types of connections all over the place i think we could actually learn a lot from studying the ways that you know that Christians and stuff connect and work with each other. So I think that's uh, pretty interesting. But getting this web page up and going, that's going to be one of the first major projects that we're going to have to uh, that we're going to have to get going. I have some um, outlines for the design of that posted in the actual uh, group somewhere. I think if you look in the pictures, you'll be able to find like a basic outline. Does anyone have any questions or comments about about that? Yeah. Uh, this is Paul. I, I guess I just maybe a clarification. So is the website going to focus on both the emergentist and revolutionary sides of it, and then we'll also have general integral content there. Uh, to begin with, or is it going to just focus on the, the really the distinct the distinguishing factors with the group from mainstream integral? I I think it'll be it'll be both. I think it's going to be sort of um, the way that I kind of envision it is like it's it's kind of based on quadrants with interiors and exteriors and um, you know the, the different ways to to plug into communities or different types of media and stuff like that. So I think, you know, there would be a place for the, the um, aspects of the group that are more about the, the values that our movement has, has. But in general, I think, you know, what, what, I, what I think we're, I wanted to, in, uh, what I think I envisioned when I originally thought about it was like to create the hub for all things integral. Where it's like, if you want to find anything integral, you would go to there. And there would also be the interior side, which had to do with, you know, the movement. And really, there is no other 
like actual in the world integral movement. There are other integral enterprises. So we are the integral movement. At least, at least as, to my knowledge. That's yeah, saying a lot, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not everyone who is at an but, integral level calls himself integral. You have to remember that. Yeah, that's true. Although that's it can true, be hard to see sure. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. There are a bunch of people, and I mean, even Cecile, you know, working on her integral governance stuff. Um, that's a part of the integral movement, whether it's organized as a, a group or not. So, for sure. All right. Yeah, I'm anyone, excited about uh, the website idea. I want to work on it. Um, David, well, that's we right, because you do well. web design and stuff, right? I am learning. I, I'm a beginner, but I want to work on it. That's, that's a uh, great project, actually. You know what? See, yeah, that's what I'm talking it. about. Like, that <laughs> sounds like that sounds like the beginning of like someone taking up a role. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So if you want to work on it, if you have passion and drive for it, then, you know, let's set up a meeting and we'll brainstorm about it some more. And, uh, you know, we, we can, uh, we can get working on that. That's exciting. Okay. So let's see what's next. Anyone else have anything, any questions or comments before we move on? Uh, this is Paul. I'm, I'm probably going to have to take off. Got to go back to work. Um, I was wondering, one comment, it would be nice to have these meetings later after work time. I don't know if that was an option for you or while we had it during the day. <laughs> yeah, the only reason uh, we picked this time was because we had a poll on the on the page, and it seemed like this was the time that um, everybody who did respond was good for but it doesn't have to always be at this time. And I wanted to say that also um, this Maestro Conference is um, a resource for our community. If any of you guys have any ideas for, you know, any other brainstorming things or, or um, talks that you guys would want to have about anything, you know, um, while we have this resource, I'm going to make it open to the community and we can all use it, especially if we're bringing back um, resources of, you know, media and whatnot to the, to the community. So you mean you have a, you have a subscription and anyone can host a conference call for a certain period of time? Like you have a month long subscription here? Yeah. Well, we got 30 days free. And then after that, it's $45 a month. Um, we could, we could maybe eventually figure something else out if, you know, I mean, that's like the good thing about what, what we're trying to do here too, is if, you know, if you have a better way, you know, bring it, bring it to our, our attention and we'll do it that way instead. So, um, yeah, for, for right now, I think, I think we're only allowed to have like 25 people on these teleconferences right now. So there, there is a limit. Okay, guys, I gotta go. Want... So it was really, it was just really nice right, meeting everybody. And yeah, we'll do another poll soon, and we'll see if we can figure out if there might be better times for people. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, just anything after a normal work time would probably be good. But that's just for me. So right. I mean, I'm, but I'm willing to work with anything. Thanks, bud. Thanks okay, so much guys. for coming. Everybody, say Cheers. bye yeah. to Paul. Thanks for having it. <laughs> bye, Paul. Bye. Guys. Bye. All right. Bye, Paul. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Yeah, All right, now he's gone. We can <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> There's yeah. only so many of the aspiring creative Yeah, I have a job too, unfortunately. It's just usually in the evenings. But um, let's see. What, what, what is next? Oh, yes. Um, so ultimately, you know, on this web page, I would like there to be some kind of a discussion board you know, like I was saying, where we could we could better keep track of these philosophy threads on different subjects, and we could so, something that's that's better than just like what's the most popular thread, but like threads organized by like subjects, and then 
if you know you go into that subject you can see you know like what might be closer to the more refined version of the idea that's happening in there you can get into the the more cutting edge of where the conversation is going hopefully we can refine and refine our models maybe we can figure out some kind of approach that's not just like your traditional like open debate style but it would be cool i think to figure out some kind of an approach to where we can work together to refine our ideas based on you know methods and tests and stuff over time like right now we have that um that thread zach and and uh layman and uh and me, we were all talking about um, the correlation between the upper left and the upper right quadrant. It would be great if we could figure out a way that we could come to some kind of a consent consensus on that problem. And, you know, a lot of that is going to be work that's already been starting to get done, defining the terms of these different distinctions. And, you know, like you guys have already been doing sort of debating, like, what about this picture? Is it like this or is it like this? And then maybe we can figure out some kind of way of like, all right, this is the closest we can get to agreement. This is the this is the the gap between it. You know, how can we figure out a way to say, all right, well, what can what do we really know? And, um, you know, like maybe there's a maybe there's some kind of a, a limit um, to our knowledge and some kind of tests we could do in that direction to get closer to, to, um, to a better understanding of what's true. So maybe we could figure out uh, um, better distinctions on that and ways to, to put a point on that and figure out how to refine it down more and more. So I think if we can if we can um, work on on uh, a, that kind of an approach to some of these topics, I don't know, that would be ideal and really interesting. And ultimately, I think that's kind of what we're going to want to start to do in terms of bringing the human conversation online as integralists and trying to organize it and figure out, you know, what where where do we agree? what's true, how, like what's the best ideas and all these different subjects and refine them to a point and then figure out how to get those points sharper and sharper. I mean, that's basically what we've been doing in this Western Enlightenment project anyways. So I, I do think that the integral project is still an extension of that project. It's just also including Eastern philosophy uh, and Eastern Enlightenment as well. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say it sounds like we're gonna probably need to get like some sort of like codex type thing together, like not just a handbook, but a really a um, formal sort of philosophical text almost. That kind yeah, of just like really. Yeah really kind of just 100% makes, you know, no questions on like, you know, no maybes of, you know, like what we might believe in between these lines, but bam. But actually getting to that point is what's really going to be the uh, main, the main yeah. work. For sure. And I, and like I said, I think even, uh, even our best attempts at something like that is probably going to, hopefully get refined to a, a, a tighter, sharper point in like 10 years after we're done with that, you know? <laughs> so um, that's probably going to be a somewhat, a somewhat ongoing process. I think something like a handbook for right now, just to kind of get our basic distinctions and ideas and methodology somewhat hammered down and clear. But I, I do think you're right. Eventually we press into that deeper, we expand it with more detail we take a closer and harder and finer look and we refine it into something like more scholarly, like what you're talking about. But I think the great thing about integral as in terms of like, I mean, I have a, I have a poster on my wall that is the integral map 
like what other philosophical system can be broken down into such a a basic sort of image that is so graspable that's what's kind of the beauty of 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 the system is its simplicity on the other side of complexity so i think if we could figure out a way to bring something like that also into a, a more brief document it'd be good to then also expand on it having it having these distinctions made in as many places as we can in many as many forms by as many people is going to be is going to be key because we really need to challenge this community and get them talking about this stuff especially at this stage of the evolution of this movement because we're going to get most of our followers and participants out of the integral community and especially if we're not just talking about stuff and criticizing but if if we're on the other side actually working to make things happen that's going to impress people so i think that's how that's part of how we win or we or integral becomes the new system anyways is that it demonstrates its superiority and so we have to do that right questions comments anyone Okay. So, let's see. What about uh, local integral sanghas and we spaces? Is, has anybody is anybody connected to any of those? Uh, well, I'm I'm making um, YouTube YouTube videos in Slovenian language and talk about theory, and basically just my way of finding people in my country. So it's like a bait. I put in the water and see if somebody <laughs> responds and resonates with videos and, and, and he's like, oh yeah, I can agree with those things. So that's what I'm doing basically. Cause like I said, I don't know anybody in my country that's integrally informed. So that's all I can do for now when it comes to my local sort of things. Well, I appreciate you doing that brother. I know that's, that can be some, uh, some serious work and that's a, I think it's a beautiful thing that you're putting in that time. Yeah, and, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm doing it as simple as possible. I'm just uh, uh, basically drawing. So you're you're doing the, you're you're using the some kind of video editor and put pictures in, and I'm just drawing pictures. It's like drawing my life, but not in mm -hmm. such a high a modern look, just normal drawing, and that's pretty much sure. it. Uh, so it doesn't take this much time, um, because yeah, if I really put an effort and do all the montage and and do pictures and so on, yeah, it would take a lot more. But the way I'm doing, it's pretty simple, so it doesn't take me that long. Well, I, I still appreciate you, brother. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it still takes time. I know it does. So. It, yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, of course. So, are, are you able? To, have you met up with a couple people yet? Who are interested? I. I, I mean, the, all the videos I have and all the people I talk to, there was. Maybe one person, but uh, he 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 said he he read about those theories, but he never uh, uh, read about uh, about Wilbur. So uh, no, I, I haven't found anybody who really really resonated yet. So I'm still waiting. Uh, but I only made three uh, two videos, so third one is on the way. So it's gonna take a while. I just started, so I'm not expecting you know. Have um, you um a lot of places? I don't know if this is true for where you're at as well, but. There's like, if you look it up, there might be in a group, a group like emerging integral, wherever you're at, and there might be like some people around there. See, this is also what I want that web page for, is so that way you could go on there and you could search up integralists in your area and you could see, okay, there's this guy, he's over here, it's a couple hours from here, but maybe we could we, maybe we could meet up, we could figure well, out how to. Get well, first of all, in Slovenia, everything is probably like one hour away because uh, it's a very small country. It's beside I Italy, so there's no couple of hours. It's just one hour because Ljubljana, okay. the capital, is exactly in the middle. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't really have to go far to meet somebody. Um, yeah, I mean, I checked some websites. Uh, I saw that there was a website uh, in Slovenian language that uh, talks about spiral dynamics. 
So I presume there's somebody there who's probably informed. Um, but uh, there's no contact yet. But yeah, I'm sure I'll find somebody. I mean, yeah, I'm making the videos, but I also do web searches to find if there are any kind of integral ideas in, 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 my, in my language. So you know, I'm sure I'll find, me... I'll find people. Yeah, and get with me, um, you know, like sometime in the next couple of days, and I'll uh, I'll spend some time and I'll do some some searches with you, and we'll see if we can find yeah, some sure. other integralists yeah. in your area because I'm sure they are. I'm uh, sure they are. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. So yeah, I hope uh, we can find uh, a few more people. Yeah, it's a really beautiful thing to be able to connect and have that integral leave space time because. Being an integralist can be very, very lonely, and yeah, a yeah, times, especially, uh, I agree, yeah, yeah, especially when you're like enlightened and you have this passion and this deep care for all sentient beings, you know. If and if you're all alone in that, it can be it can be very heavy on you. Um, uh, so it it, it is basically, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's heavy for you anyways, right? But knowing yeah. that there's other people out there who are also working on it and, like, they they care too and they're it's heavy on them and they're going to put in work and time. It makes, it makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. Knowing, knowing you guys are all here and that we're all going to be working on it together makes me feel a lot better. I'm so appreciative of you all. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Oh, Are yeah. you familiar with the reinventing organizations movement, the teal thing? Because no, tell me more uh, about that. So there are meetup groups. So on meetup.com, and I think this mm -hmm. is how you found the people in Dallas. Um, yep. There are some groups in various cities for integral meetups on meetup.com, and we could reach out to those kind of communities. When I reached out to people here in Madison for that. I ended up being added to an email list. Um, some people, some professors, basically, have been teaching classes occasionally that include biodynamics, and they are connected with the Reinventing Organizations community, which was a big part of the Integral Europe conference, I believe. They have a book that they put out, um, which is supposedly a guidebook on how to structure organizations in a teal way. And I think that there are some other local groups centered around that concept. Um, cool. Do you have some some links that maybe you could provide for for some more context on that that you could post? I in the think. Group? Yeah, I could post this stuff. Uh, I think U Lab is connected with that. Transforming okay. business, society, and self with U Lab by the Presency Presencing Institute. Hmm. I'll post some of this stuff. It's interesting sometimes um, getting together and trying to get organized with other integralists. It can be a little bit like herding cats sometimes. Uh, what I've found is with people who are used to being like the smartest person in the room, when you get all those people in a room together, <laughs> it can be uh, can be interesting. But it's definitely it's definitely good. Um, I was on mute earlier when you asked um, for input, and I was trying to describe that when you were talking about uh, the website and trying to like hash through ideas and come to conclusions in a collaborative process, what I was picturing is uh, ways in which it, we could think about reimagining how a forum works, how like looking at different ways the online forums are structured. Um, yeah. This is particularly interesting to me since. I discovered that some of our discussion is happening on Facebook. Um, Facebook is wonderful because it identifies people with a real life um, identity. So it, ha it encourages yeah. people to own their ideas and be upfront about it. Um, and it's easy, it's low, uh, it's easy for most people to join one of those groups because they already have a Facebook page. But it can be problematic because a lot of people are, are resistant to joining Facebook. Some people are very secretive and don't want to be on there or think that it's an addictive, um, like a source of addictive behavior, which it can be for some people. So there's interesting comparisons between different ways that forums work, and I wonder if there are some ways in which the insights of organizational theory that we're studying 
could translate into um, new ways of designing online forums. You know, if you need to. Yeah, I, uh, I think that yeah, for too. Example, yeah. For I've example, also been thinking about. Oh no! Go ahead. Go ahead. Statements. <laughs> Uh, like having some sort of formal way of, of encouraging people to cite their statements. If you say something in a comment, um, having some kind of structure for um, people to verify, you know, whether that citation is uh, an actual source of truth or not. Yeah, I think it would also be interesting to figure out ways to map the different. Um, categories and subcategories of the of an argument you know what I mean like so it's like okay here's this argument these are the different um, points that have been raised about it you know the different areas or whatever and then these are the different responses that people give to that and then we could kind of like within each of those uh, basic sub threads kind of figure out um, which arguments win or what, you know, or whatnot, you know, and actually come to some kind of resolution, at least within sub threads to figure out maybe how to get closer to, you know, dealing with the actual um, topic or something like that. I don't know. I, I definitely think that I love right, that. Though. Yeah. Like figuring out better ways to map it and organize it. You know, and if, if I, I really like the idea of like, if you could do that with all you know, human, you know, uh, conversations, or areas of agreement and disagreement within different fields and stuff that you could build almost like a, a quadratic three-dimensional tree of knowledge where you could like map all human ideas. Oh my God. That's, that's, okay. <laughs> yes. Because, it, because the form itself takes the structure of a map or a tree. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, and I'm sure so, you guys have probably seen those uh, those websites that kind of like organize uh, Wikipedia articles by um, their like how many steps, how many articles it takes it to get to the philosophy section, and so that kind of I haven't seen that. What that, is that? Oh, let me see if I can find the website here really quick. And I can also make a post. Six of degrees it later. of Wikipedia. I do think yeah, that's it's interesting because like. The way the information is displayed for us right now is in a very kind of green, what's popular, flatland kind of way where it's just like, here's a bunch of the most popular things in order. Whereas, like, if we could figure out this other kind of way of mapping um, human knowledge or, you know, the different possible, you know, categories and subcategories and correlations, you could maybe even, like, turn that into a search engine and, like, search up a topic and it would like custom build you your own different um, tree of knowledge around that topic, and then you could search within the subcategories and different aspects of it like that. I don't know. I think I think that uh, the future holds some really cool stuff as we start to map the data a little bit a little bit better. I'm yeah, glad so. That we think about this. And so, like, on the other side of that, um, with the mapping, I think if we had a little um, a clearer sort of, like, methodology applied to, you know, when, we, when you know, we make an original post in such a form that, you know, we identify, you know, pathos, telos, logos, um, you know, all those kind of, like, you know, qualities. So that you know, we kind of like you don't have to hit all of those things, but so long as you kind of like make clear of where you're going with that, and then that kind of gives the direction for people to respond from there. That's and, interesting. And I think like if you were going at that with the intention of mapping out those sort of like details, then coming at it with a uh, approach like that would make kind of make it a little bit easier. Yeah, it might be it's, to be it's, able to it's very tag our own to think stuff, about. but also Say have again? other people. I think, I mean, obviously, categorizing and ranking algorithms are hugely problematic in all of this. We need to be able to say what we think we're posting, but also we need to be able to integrate what other people think is in our post. I've been a moderator at Integral Life for a couple of years, and I have a set of repeated critiques I keep making to Corey, who runs the software. 
One is yeah. that it should be a hub. Uh, one is that it should have an integral Craigslist so that there can be um, physical exchanges between people being set up. But another one is this uh, most recent and most popular is a terrible way to rank things, rank things because it, it gives free reign to whoever's going to post the most with the most emotional reactivity. And there needs to be a different uh, set of what is moved to the top, just like there needs to be a different set of how do we decide what's in it. And how do we decide what's in it? Those tags essentially have to correspond to whatever we think are the basic uh, fundamental chunks of our integral model. Right. Yeah. And this is also why we need um, some kind of a good methodology to be able to process those tensions so that we can refine quickly. You know, if if you have some good ideas about that and integral life hasn't been able to uh, take those into account and incorporate them, that's their loss. Absolutely. They're not, it's clear to me they're not going to be the hub, so they have to be absorbed into a hub. How we make the decisions yeah. about that, like in a lot of what we're saying here, it keeps coming back to the question of how does a group make a decision about something? And that's at the root of holacracy and all these other kinds of things. We have to be yes. able to apply some kind of advanced collective intelligence protocol. Even if at the beginning right. we're going to be more casual and we're going to see what emerges, ultimately we have to have a routine for deciding amongst people which is better than the routines that currently exist. Exactly, exactly. Excuse me, that who was is this one talking the... about integral life? What's your name? I'm Newt, hi. Newt? Hi. <laughs> it's um, who, it's, who la it's Layman. Life? He he uh he's under the name Newt Gingrich. Layman isn't your real oh, name either, it. is it? <laughs> Pascal it is. What is it? Pascal, that's real. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Oh Layman, I didn't um, know that you were oh, you're a moderator. Okay, at Interval Life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think you um when you were first when when you were a little bit late to the meeting, but when I first started, I kind of started by saying that that this that this meeting in particular, because we're not um, any any of us initiated into this kind of a process, it's going to be a, um, a little bit before we're able to to you know get get it going and get into it. But definitely, that is that is the project of of um, getting this the revolutionary aspect of this movement going because it's the integral decision-making processes that transcend um, personal bias and might makes right kind of uh, things. That's like, that's the real jewel that we need to bring into the world and figure out um, how to birth that process and to get it going and to refine it and to make it better. So I definitely agree with you. That's going to be, that's going to be the, one of the most powerful things if we can make it happen. So let's see, where are we now? I think, is anyone else, is anyone else plugged into any kind of local integral community? What about you, Pascal? Are you uh, a member of some kind of local you know, group? Well, there's a few things that go on, Victoria, but I tend to avoid them. I mostly seek out a personal network of people who are integral in their thinking without necessarily being strongly integrally informed. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of opportunities for what I would consider integral altitude stuff going on out here. I mean, I, I do talks and have meetings. I do a lot of stuff under the rubric of beyond interfaith. So it's, it's calling out a particular type of person with a particular uh, a, a level or an opening that's available. But um. Mm. I don't always seek out the people that are conversant in the the integral theory concepts. Sometimes that's a little bit too static for me. Right. So it's more like you're more looking for the more implicit integral kinds of uh, practitioners and, and uh, making those kind of distinctions and, and more open kind of talk. Yeah, there's a few groups around here, but um, I seek out integral lights instead of integral lists. It's sort of my own phrasing on that. Nice. Yeah, I think, you know, even uh, 
even integral it as like a as like a title or a banner or something like that i think it's i think it's useful i think by taking it on um, it gives us the power of having a set of agreements and a pretty broad community that already exists and uh, is somewhat coming together around those um, important distinctions, or at least there's something uh, foundational to appeal to within the, the structure of integral theory to be able to point people who are already um, working in that direction more in that direction. So. I can definitely resonate with you around, you know, not not just looking for for integral lists, but integral lights. I uh, yeah, I, like I think that. it's a matter of uh, you know, like looking where's the what kind of mineral has the ore in it that we're looking for. Like, what kinds of groups have a high probability of having people who are resonant with these topics. Right, so it might be reinventing organization. It might be uh, progressive Buddhists. It might be, you know, cosmologically oriented materialists. It might be any kind of group where there's going to be a percentage of people who are sympathetic to this direction. Yeah, and I I think right now you know our our focus is on um, trying to bring this this uh, discussion to the integral community, but I definitely think that uh, you know part of part of what I uh, um, have conceived in my sort of unfolding long view plan is that especially you know at the more local levels and like when when we can get these groups happening in in the world to to try to find more people out there and to find more like resonance with other groups who are like you're saying going to be sympathetic maybe they wouldn't normally come together under you know under the banner of integral but on the other hand, you know, I do think part of what we're what we're doing is to, you know, raise a banner and at least to try to figure out ways to organize people under it. So, sure, both of those things have to go on, and I think what joins them is the notion that you've talked about of, of a simplified upset of what are the ideas we can agree on, because that stripped down version. Uh, not only yeah. separates people within the integral community, but that's what you can export to other communities because a simplified rubric is much easier to agree with. Yeah, I think that's right. And you know, as as our movement persists and uh, goes out into the world, not everybody who gets involved at all levels is even going to have to necessarily, you know, agree with or or be integrally informed or something like that. Like we could. We could have projects in our local community if we could get some of these integral we spaces going to where we could um, maybe uh, work with um, local homeless people or something like that and like bring real change into into our community and figure out some of the, trying to get some social programs going to uh, to make more long lasting change and uh, you know to do to do like local real work. I would like to. I would like to see a lot of that kind of stuff too. At a certain point, I don't think we're we're there yet, but you know, I think uh, I think we got to build and come together, not just you know at the top of the mountain up here, like us few integralists from different places around the country and around the world, but we got to take it back into our local communities as leaders and uh, work on on bringing people together under these banners, under these agreements. And figuring out how we can practice the skills and the methodology that we learn together here in a in a group in our in uh, you know in our community, how we can you know expand the four quadrants of our movement in in the real world in societies, and then maybe how we can also come together and have like big events and stuff like that that are affordable for people to actually be able to come to. I don't know about you guys, but I've never been able to go to any of those integral events. They're like thousands no. of dollars. Yeah, it sounds a little unaffordable. <laughs> Especially if you're an artist. Like, I remember they were having like a an end of the year kind of thing once, and um, me and my um, wife at the time were both 
artists, musicians, like doing stuff around that, around those topics. And I was like, we would love to come out and, you know, take part. And they're like, yeah, well, if you perform or you do something, you know, we could take like a hundred dollars or something off your ticket price. <laughs> it's still like thousands of dollars and we'd have to like get out there and have like a place to stay that and works. all that food and take off work. And yeah, it's just like, who are the, are, are, are integralists mostly like rich white men? Is that what's going on? Like how, how does it, how do people afford that? How do they have a community gathering well, like that? It's, it's an interesting point because like the only, the only politician that I've ever really heard that is uh, in, even integrally informed would be Bill Clinton. And yeah, I'm not, sh- I'm not sure how well representative of the, uh, rich white folk community like that would be but <laughs> I think there's a problem with uh, well let's say the green extension of capitalism still colors a lot of integral where the, the idea is yeah. that we're going to put out the things we love and we're going to profit from the community of people that share our values so the integral community is seen as uh a place to get money from for projects. I understand we might need dues or something to start that up, but generally the thinking has not been to enrich the community. It's been mostly to use the community to enrich the people who are producing the products. Um, right. That's 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 got a huge drawback. I mean, Sean's stuff from Meta Integral. I don't know if you read his recent letter, but he was basically indicating that that was his strategy to to think of the community as a source of funding to get integral projects going, and it just hasn't worked. And and really, why should it? Right? We should be enriching. Our idea should be how to enrich the community, not how to use the yes. community to get projects. Right. And any kind of dues Definitely. that we that we that we had, it like none of that's going to ever go into my pocket. That's going to all go back into bringing value into the community, you know, to like get this web page going, to get like different things going. And if we can get to a point where, you know, we don't, where we have like an, you know, an extra money or like, I mean, like all the, all the stuff that we do buy is going to go to the people. So it's going to, it's the total, the total opposite approach to that. Like the way I like to think about what we're, what we're trying to do in a sense is like, to start some kind of a co-op, something like the one human family business. Eventually, I would think that you know we would want to get everyone to join and start start some of a, a move more towards collective individualism, because the way that our economy and and uh, technology and all that stuff is going, we need like we need to to create a new way to live together in general. And I, I think we probably all see that. But yeah, what I, I what I love about this is the attempt to anchor it more in a both a social and a material sense of well being. Yes. Like what's good for people and what's really good for communities and you know, where does this base itself on a more scientific understanding of matter? In in a very trivial kind of way, one of the things I've often proposed on integral life is to have it be more like Craigslist than like a forum, or at least to have that supplement things. Because people's ability to form personal relationships or to share items or to get projects going. I mean, Kai mentioned meetup.com. There are a lot of ways other than forums for people to exchange with people who are like themselves. And it should be very materially focused. Yeah, that's it. Not just products and media, but connecting people and bringing them together on conversations and projects and local events and things like that. Real shit in the real world where we can actually make a real movement. I think the um, the whole like Hegel-Marx comparison is, uh, is apt. Like, I think that... Uh, but what we're what we're doing very much mirrors the whole uh, the the whole split between the the Hegelians and the young Hegelians, and like how Marx kind of took it off into a more um, materialistic kind of perspective, talking about like um, I would I would say you know a, a more emergentist perspective and a more um, socially I mean even that's kind of what what Don Beck 
is talking about. He's not talking about, you know, some some kind of consciousness that that uh, realizes itself. He's more talking about like um, the conditions that arise due to social pressure and stuff like that. So it's a much more materialistic dialectic, and uh, that's definitely. That's definitely the way I swing, at least in terms of a more literal view. I'm, I'm, I like idealistic poetry just as much as the next guy, especially when it's qualified in terms of, you know, not being about some r- superstitious nonsense, but talking about our experience or something like that. Anyways, um, does anyone want to say anything before we get back to? where we were at okay so media I'm going to wrap up and then we'll start to pass it around here Um, we have that ERM YouTube page now so if anybody wants to do any kind of interviews um, or if they have ideas for, for videos that they want to make um, whatever, whatever kind of things you you want to do, we can post them on there. And um, really, I just want to invite the community to make make media about this stuff. To like, you know, talk about to talk about it to get the the conversation going to to bring the distinctions to the community. Like I recently made that Steve McIntosh video as as many of you know. Um, in terms of where we're at with something like that, he he did challenge me to a, a debate. He has recently um, talked about trying to back out of it. But I've been working on a video that kind of does, like it's like about a four minute long video. I already made like a rough draft version of it, but I'm gonna remake it. And uh, it's basically, you know, apologizing to him if he felt like I was at all giving him any kind of personal attacks and kind of restating my my purpose and my intention and sort of inviting him to uh, to to take up up the mantle and and do it for the community to bring this to bring this debate into the light and uh, hopefully. Uh, we can put some pressure on him to, you know, skillful, skillfully put some pressure on him to uh, to get him to want to do that. But even yeah, if he I doesn't that's do that, that. What's that, that one you're just talking about, that four minute idea, I think uh, that's a good idea. Steve's very, uh, very sensitive guy. He's very attuned to uh, a kind of politeness. Really, I just set up a Skype call with him for next week. So he and I talk fairly regularly, and I'll try to um, tip him in the direction of doing this debate. He's quite, uh, he's a surprisingly sensitive guy, so that's an important thing to keep in mind. He, um, yeah. He, he doesn't say, I but can, his feelings uh, get sometimes, agitated quite easily. Right. I can sometimes be kind of um, blunt, <laughs> and sometimes that's not... Uh, as skillful as I would like to be. So I'm kind of um, kind of working on myself in this regard to, to, to try to, to be a better leader for, uh, for the movement and for what we're trying to accomplish. So um, yeah, it I'm, seems I'm not, to me like you're going in the right direction. Yeah, I think I, I appreciate figuring that. Figuring out the etiquette I'm, and the vibe is something we're all working on. Yeah, it's it's difficult. Um, so, you know, I it doesn't hurt me to to offer him an apology and to re- restate my intentions. If anything, it, I would hope that it would clear up some of this this drama that I think was a bit unnecessary, and hopefully get us focused back on the topics at hand and the different distinctions at play. So, have you yeah, worked on uh, getting hold of his? Uh, books um, I do not have his books yet uh, but I definitely that is that's another thing that I have uh, said in the video that 
you know, that I would definitely take up the challenge of, you know, making sure that I familiarized myself in detail with his ideas and his books before I debated him to, uh, you know, honestly, between, (laughs) between you and me and everybody who's listening to this recording, like, I think, I think, you know, it, it, it will be better in terms of, you know, politically correctness and, you know, maybe uh, good scholarship to check out his books, but I've listened to him talk a whole lot. And when you edit a video like that and you break it all down, like, you really get the nuances of the, of the arguments at play. And really, regardless of the, the particular distinctions and nuances of, of where he goes with his views, like his, his methodology itself, his, his basic epistemology and the way that he's, he's justifying his stuff and propping it up isn't good and could really prop up and justify tons of bullshit, which it is used in that way. So I think it will be, it is, it, it, if it is not very clear that he's not applying integral methodology, it will become very clear. So, and, and really that's all I'm talking about. I don't need to debunk the specifics of his particular superstition. Right. And that's, and that's pretty much but, the only thing that I would want to see from his books is because in that talk of when, you know, you were speaking to him, there was no, there was no pre-bracketing of, uh, what hit the actual uses of what he was talking about was for he just kind of like jumped right into the uh, metaphysical thick of it. So, so I, I th- that's my issue with it is how he presents those ideas. And if it is different in the book, then I'd be like, well, okay, you're fine then. But, yeah. But that's a lot yeah, of that's pretty much more nuanced ideas that. are in the background. So they are, um, he, I mean, he sent me a few of his books, um, but I agree that in the video, you don't get most of the nuance. What you get is a something that leans more towards an idealistic, neo-perennialist perspective, which he's very sympathetic to. Uh, I think in general, his goals are the same goals we have here, um, but it's, um, it's not always where he leads. And in my imagination, the, the general movement has different subsections you know there's an idealist subsection of the movement there's a materialist subsection of the movement and in part because there are these different populations we have to relate to um, but i think there's yeah. a there's a more post metaphysical more critical aspect of steve if one can get through to it uh, even though i kind of think personally um, videos are more important than movies you know, when I did the critique of him last year on SoundCloud, um, I did it just on his video talk about his book. I didn't read his book at that time because I do feel like we ought to behave as if more are coming through the videos than are coming through books. Yeah, because, I mean... Yeah, there shouldn't be that disconnect. If you look at the title of the video that I made about him, it's about integral integrity so really i'm talking about the way that he's representing integral ideas in public not it's not a critique of steve mcintosh and his books it's look at what this person look how this person is representing integral ideas and uh, integral evolutionary spirituality and look at how he justifies it and so yeah that's a great argument about I mean, the argument about what people are calling out to is different than the argument about what people are. We we see this in a lot of the integral political discussions, right? If somebody wants to say, it, it, it pigeonholes Bernie Sanders, say, to say that he's green. But what yeah, people that's mean annoying. is that he's, he's resonating with a lot of green things for people, right? So the sure. same is with Steve. We're not saying this is what Steve is. We're saying... Here's a here's what that might be calling forth in people, and that's worth looking at and debating. Yeah, yeah, Ex- exactly. And I mean, that's why I think, um, that's why I, in part, why I compared him to Michael Dowd, 
because Michael Dowd is going into churches and talking to traditional people and, you know, like, you know, like within, within the tradition of Christianity, I'm sure he's talking to green Christians and orange Christians as well as blue Christians. And he probably has different arguments that uh, apply better with, with each, you know, with each um, one. But um, I feel like what he, what, what uh, Michael Dowd is doing is a way of skillfully integrating all religious symbolism. Like it's, it's all metaphorically valid. It all has, you know, uh, poetic validity. And if we're going to make claims about what, what's real in reality, we got to be able to back those claims up, you know, with the methodology of the quadrant that we're appealing to. But that doesn't, that doesn't seem to be, you know, what Steve is doing. He's advocating for like pluralism in his own particular, um, his own particular thing that he likes. Not necessarily to the exclusion of all other things, but I, I, I wouldn't say that he's skillfully integrating in all religious traditions. They seem to be thinking that the only religious traditions are Christianity and Buddhism. And those are both idealistic, you know, um, mm -hmm. very po very popular religious traditions, but that's not a skillful integration of religion, as far as I'm concerned. I think there's also, you know, a uh, semantic or a, like existential um, thing about it too, not just about like, what's the most true view but um, how do you understand and, and interpret and frame the truth in a way that gives you a healthy relationship to reality? So I think there's like, there's a place for certain beliefs, let's say, um, but they're more like attitudes than they are like claims about the nature of reality, I would say. If that makes sense. No, yeah, because at any given point, you can feel one way or you can feel the other way about pretty much any metaphysical thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it's kind of interesting. Like part of the one way and the other way, because uh, that makes a lot of discussions at this altitude problematic, which is anything that comes out of anybody's mouth at this level, they've probably got almost the opposite idea in the back of their mind as well yeah sure no and and I Mike, think, you, know, you can always entertain any of those ideas and sure. go from there and i think we should be able to talk about like different different ways that would be good to translate different things or uh m different ways that might not be good and you know like that's a and for who valid yeah, and in what circumstance? Yeah, for sure. There's a question about Steve, and like a lot of people criticize, say, somebody like Terry Patton for being, uh, let's say, a little too open to the Urantia movement or other kinds of uh, seemingly progressive spiritual groups. But it may be that there are a lot of people there that ultimately we need that are resonant with us in some way or another. So there is there's a place for people who personally skew in that direction to a certain extent and there's also a place for people that want to pull back from there and get a little better footing yeah and, and that's what i was saying earlier too i think about you know like i think there's a particular point in the unfolding of our movement where it does become appropriate to try to find other people who might be of like mind in uh in other movements who are doing things um, similar, except for it seems to me that the people who they're looking for aren't like philosophers who are um, making the important distinctions and who are working on trying to make the world a better place. They're integrating a bunch of new agey mystics who come to integral for like a for their ego to feel to feel superior and um, 
to, to to talk about how their spiritual practice is like, you know, in line with science. But then when you hold them to it, yeah, there's a there's a lot of um, there's a lot of green new agey problems that are sneaking their way into into the integral community. I think because of bad integration. Like if you if you look back at um, this video about integral communication, where Ken Wilber is talking about uh, intellectual violence and pulling people up the up the scale too too fast. Like one of the things that he says is um, that we want to find people who are already integral and give them an integral map. And I think that's what we need to be doing in terms of of integration is to is to hold more tight. To our standards and our distinctions and integrate people into the group by teaching them those distinctions um, but to like enc encourage a bunch of new agers like if you if you resonate with this then you're already integral even though you don't know any of the distinctions you just you're already intuiting it like that just to me doesn't it doesn't feel like good integration it feels like it feels more no, like, I think, uh, like I a think what we need to do is apply a wedge in a certain sense, right? We have to be really open to people who are coming at it and building their own integral perspective and their own integral feeling from a bunch of different angles. And each of those angles is going to be a place where they've got a few of the pieces locked down and a lot of the pieces yet to go, like all of us. But if you yeah. approach them as a group, yeah. what you want to do is draw some kind of distinction or bring some kind of challenge so that some of them see a way forward and that some of them don't. Like I'm, a, I'm a big Nietzsche fan, and one of the things he was trying to do with the eternal recurrence as a philosophy was mm -hmm. to draw a dividing line, right? He wanted an idea. He kept thinking about this. How could I come up with an idea that would be acceptable and empowering to the healthiest people? and upsetting and off-putting to the people I don't want. Yes. Right. And I think that's, to some extent that's kind of what we've done with the uh, the outline of our, our group and our intentions. Maybe it's not not as uh, beautiful and poetic and simplistic as what uh, as Nietzsche's idea of, of eternal recurrence, but yeah, I, I, I feel you. Yeah, so if we're trying a similar thing. Yeah, so I think I think we're we're resonating pretty well around that. Um, let's let's. I also want to make um, a video that is going to talk more about those in, those distinctions and invite people to our group, like just a video about that, and hopefully flesh out some of it a bit more. Also, want to make a a series of like pre-trans videos that fleshes out that distinction a bit like because honestly i feel like the emergentist thing like frank visser and integral world they've been hammering on on those points about science and evolution for a long time but i don't really see hardly anybody making these pre-trans distinctions in a in a skillful way i mean there's there's a couple people but we need more, I think, talk about that because I think that's I, I think that's really powerful, at least at least for me in my experience, when I learned how to read mythology as poetry and understand it more as like, you know, in a in a Jungian kind of Joseph Campbell kind of way, that's when this stuff really started to sing to me and that's when I felt like, you know, I was this is what it is to have an integral understanding of religion and to be able to incorporate the poetry and the truths and the overarching themes and the, the particular, you know, distinctions and focuses of all these different religions as our, as our human heritage, like that's where it's at. So I, uh, I want to, I want to hammer, hammer on that point more and try to bring, bring those distinctions more into the community. Yeah, I think people seeing how to apply those things in different areas is immensely useful. Um, you know, um, you were talking a little bit earlier about semantics, 
And it always seems to me like it's almost a line of its own because we can say, you know, how do, how do people at green feel about religion is a question we can ask, but what is the green meaning of the word religion is a hidden question when you ask that first question. And a lot of the time, even at integral levels, we're still using what I would consider to be an amber definition of religion. So there's yes. there's all these different trajectories under which we can unpack that pre-trans or that uh, pre-conventional, conventional, post-conventional, post some basic set of distinctions that in making yeah. them, we get a an orienting trajectory. I've definitely also thought about, um, because I, everyone always says they're spiritual but not religious, and to me, like, I think from a more, like, uh, integrally informed pre perspective, I think we almost want to be religious more than spiritual. I just think we need a, a new understanding of what religion is based on the functions that it actually fulfills in society. So I think what a lot of times happens is that people go, like, just like they do with government, they go, oh, well these governments that we have um, suck, so, you know, fuck government. Well, we need a government. It fulfills particular functions. Well, I think we need a religion. It serves it serves functions. And I think, that, you know, the problem has been is that the cosmology has changed so fast and so rapidly over these past years that no religion can keep up with it. And it's part of um, the integral age and the integral project to, I think, not only bring on a new healthy form of governance, but a new integral healthy form of religion. And I've definitely thought about the project of, you know, what what integral religious preaching might be and what that might look like as a um, as like a you know an, an integral religious community or something like that. Um, Joseph Campbell says that when religious myth mythologies are functioning properly and healthily, they serve four main functions. The first function is the mystical function, which opens up the mystery of reality, which is also your mystery. Notice the word mystery there. That's an important, important factor. The second is the cosmological function, which serves to incorporate the knowledge and understanding of the day. and you know, the third function is the sociological function, which binds together a group with roles and rules. And um, if if it doesn't include the second cosmological function, then those roles and rules are going to be out of date and um, dysfunctional and unhealthy, which is what we see in a lot of our religions now. And uh, the fourth function is the pedagogical function, which is to move the individual through the inevitable stages and crises of life to have those ceremonies of birth and death and initiation and all that kind of stuff. And we need all that. So to have, you know, a healthy, a healthy form of that where we can touch into the power of this poetry without superstition and we can talk about, you know, encouraging and inspiring and beautiful stuff that's not necessarily just teaching, but that is preaching about how we should live together maybe referencing multiple different um, ideas from multiple different traditions and doing different practices. Well, I think we could think the, eventually uh, get something like that. The word function is a critical one in all of that, right? That's what, that's what the amber definition of religion lacks is the yes. modern notion of function, that it does something. And if it's not doing that thing, then it's not really a religion. Right. Or it's just uh, having yeah, a bunch of people together religion. and agree is not religious. That's right. So I think uh, figuring out how to eventually demonstrate something like that, that's another really important um, project that, that we can get going. And I think the more we, we can break break into that as well you know as much as it's going to be powerful to open up you know a revolutionary movement and get people organized and activated i think if we can bring on um all of these things at once in some sense 
where we can get the culture and the poetry and the music and the art and the re- and the religion and we can you know get the poetry and like all those things will resonate together to make this integral movement so powerful i agree that's almost yeah. my definition of religion for me spirituality is sort of uh it's a surplus meaningfulness and coherence you can generate by integrating the parts of yourself in your own experience. And religion is the, the same thing, the analogy to that at the cultural level, where what you're integrating are the genres of available cultural experience. So when everything starts to come together, when you've got theory and philosophy and psychology and science at whatever level, then what you've got is the production of a numinous surplus power at that level. And that surplus allows you to have a new style and a new vitality and a renaissance at whatever level we're operating at. But that's, that's right. pretty much my definition of religion. Yeah, and I mean, if, if, what we're, if what we're talking about makes any sense, you know, like the reason we want to uplift the world and bring these you know these tools to to humanity that to me is like walking walking your talk you know like like living the shit out as a spiritual practice if it's just you know me meditating and feeling really good about myself that's super narcissistic like to me like a real enlightened perspective is about taking action and so that's what we need to bring to this group let me um let me open up the floor to more perspectives. Is there anybody else, any other voices who have been kind of quiet for a little bit who want to who want to chime in on this stuff? We've been getting a little bit a little bit off on 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 some tangents, but I feel like it's been really good. No, I can't think, think of anything that I uh, expressly disagreed with there. So, what about so something that you really resonated with? Imp- Go ahead. This is Kai. I think the religious aspect is very important. I agree with what you're saying about that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think the uh, sociolog- sociological function is the main thing that people seem to be leaving behind when they realize, oh, hey, you know, most of the religions that we have available here are making unfounded assumptions and aren't really useful on practically any level at this point. So. And I think that's probably the main thing that's been lost. It's just the uh, yeah social glue. That's that's totally it. You know, when those roles and rules are like so out of date like that, it's appropriate for people to rebel against those antiquated systems, and it does break down the the sort of social ties and stuff like that. That really was the initial thing that gave. Um, the traditional stages, it's power to hold together a society. So we need that again, you know, like to, and I think that's why, you know, the, the turquoise and, and, and is like a, it's like a bluish green, right? It's like, we're being able to almost like the judgment that you get at blue with like a, a fundamentalism almost like this is the fundamentals of how we're going to, how we're going to live together in a more um, loving, all accepting kind of way where we can really, um, cause I mean like at green, like green gets a lot of crap, but that is where this idea of like love for everybody and, and universal care and compassion and stuff like that comes online. They just don't have the, the judgments and distinctions and discernments in place to actually realize that. So I think that's our project. And early integral is doing that for themselves, but um, you know the, the later stage integral informed is trying to figure out how we can bring that to society. How you doing, Zach? I'm doing good. Just kind of yeah, relaxing, kind of soaking it all in. <laughs> Word. But yeah, I definitely agree. So I do think we need to um, have more 
interviews and conversations we need to we need to get our voices on the record and be heard so if, if you guys want to figure out a time and a place to do that it would be cool if we could have you know some kind of candid integral conversations and and post some of those that might be interesting i think it would be really good to um, host some events of our own eventually to have um, debates of our own eventually where we can not just me and Steve McIntosh, but maybe we could get like a panel of different integralists to debate these ideas. I was saying something also about how I thought it would be cool if we had like some kind of a, like a summit or like a, like a thing where we could get a bunch. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the beyond belief conferences, but like the beyond belief idea is like, now what, now that we don't have uh, have God in a more kind of humanistic kind of like, now, how are we going to, deal with these these problems that we're kind of talking about about like a lack of religion and how we can live together and that kind of stuff but i think it'd be cool to to get a bunch of people who are going to give talks on these things but also then open it up to the to the floor of experts who can then comment on it and then maybe we can also have some we can practice some of these techniques of getting these different people with different perspectives in a room together and see if we can really refine to a point, not just this, well, you talk, then I talk and like, let people decide in their mind. Let's see if we can really, you know, feel like one argument defeats another argument in a sub thread and if we can refine it. So that might be uh, interesting, something to try. Yeah. I'm interested in a lot of, uh, ideas I've had in the back of my mind that may not get realized in other ways, like the critiques I've been making on integral life for some years, or some of the ideas I put forward for the next integral conference, which it looks like might not happen next year. Uh, Mark Franco and I were going to do a dueling sermons thing with an integral concept of theology. But one of the other things I had proposed was to pick a topic, um, and my first thought was, um, you know, Muslim head coverings, but it could be anything. And to try to investigate, but then resolve that topic through an advanced voting protocol of some kind so that we can experience and walk through some kind of more sophisticated decision making method. Like to yeah, have an interview, like- to have a debate, and then to have a routine for figuring it out and coming to a decision somehow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I kind of like that idea of like maybe even taking any sort of popular topic and and like throwing an integral perspective on it, just to kind of key in the uh, you know what's kind of popular in your culture right now, and then you know bring some integral awareness to that. Yeah, and I think you know, in the same way that um, the other the other integral integral life and all that, they're making tons of media. You know, we need to start making more media about this stuff from our perspective, so that way we can, as far as I'm concerned, represent uh, integral in a more in a more skillful way in media in the world. One thing I was also thinking about doing, because you know, I'm I'm basically going to slowly criticize a lot of a lot of the leaders in our community who I feel like aren't aren't doing a, a very good job. Um, one of the things I was thinking was to like start to um, criticize like daily evolvers since they're making so much media like I could go back through a lot of his his stuff and do like a greatest hits and break it into like little subsections and just do like 10 15 minutes like once a week uh, sort of taking a more um, emergentist, revolutionary, uh, integral perspective on some of these things and try to flesh them out a little bit, a little bit better and maybe make some corrections and stuff like that. Um, But I think the more kind of projects like that, that we can take on where we can, I mean, the good, the good thing about, the good thing about criticizing some of these people in this way is that they have an audience. They have people that are that are uh, paying attention to them, and if if we criticize them, then we can you know we gain access to their audience. 
and maybe we can even sway some of their audience into uh, in, in more in our direction. But we got to also fill that uh, that gap with some media and some content of our own. So that's something we got to work on. And it would be good to have have uh, media that's not just critical, but that's like you know. That's like you're saying, looking at different topics and trying to to bring this this perspective to bear on it. Right. Also, if we could get you know some some more stuff on Integral World or get some more, I don't know. I think there's like an Integral Reddit. Maybe we could get on there and see what's going on there. Get more active in the groups. Those are all kind of things that that are super helpful. Where else? Yeah, for one day. Go ahead. I was gonna say the. Uh, it seems like the integral Reddit haven't been on for a while, but it seems mostly dead. Not sure. Is it how much activity they actually get? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Really nice nice subreddits that I'm not familiar with on Reddit. Say again. <laughs> Several people at once. Um, this is Kai. I use Reddit a lot, and I find it to be a very stimulating forum for discussion. So um, it's not like we can like force a community to go over there, but I, I guess I'm surprised that people don't talk about Integral on Reddit. It's interesting. I think there is an Integral Reddit, but I haven't really dove into it very much. So it's very active. So yeah, I'd be interested to uh, be interesting to see if we can find more places where the integral community is hanging out and engage with them there. Probably so, the question is who are the moderators for that subreddit? We don't know the people who are doing it. Yeah, I don't know. You know, someone created the subreddit, so there must be some moderators, but they're probably a little bit isolated. You know, um, another thing that uh, me and Zach were talking about one day, we were having a little bit of a brainstorm around it, was like when I think about um, my long view and trying to get people um, to think about how we could do things differently, one of the problems I often run into is that people think about the things that you're suggesting for a new system in, in the light or in the context of how things are in our current system. And so that can be um, kind of a problem, especially when you're like slowly introducing somebody into how um, a, a new world or a new system would be. So I, I uh, was talking to him a little bit about the idea of um, fiction and trying to maybe like um, throw you into this world, but maybe also put you in it at like different levels and we could do some kind of like a nonlinear thing where you could be at different stages of the revolution within the context of a story and it could, and you could explain the distinctions and the way that the, the, the world works thematically and uh, dramatically as opposed to um, like logically and <laughs> and rationally. And, uh, well, and at the, kind of at the huh? same time, just interject here a little bit. Uh, like, mm -hmm. I think you would also want to make it seem realistic because, you know, you don't want to say, you know, oh, we jumped to all this different areas and then not really explain how you got there. So I think, I think the a realism, a, a, at least the sense of realism is pretty important in something like yes, that. Yes, yes. I'm not talking about fantasy. When I say fiction, I just mean like, you know, to to sort of create a, a storyline that would take you through like the actual ways that we think it might go. So to so bring you into right. like, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. So totally, like no, <laughs> no fantasy elements or any kind of thing like that. But yeah, just the kind of like um, other other ideas about how to maybe throw you into this world. And it's it's a super it, it's super interesting when you really start thinking about. Um, the consequences 
and the, the the problems that we have coming on, coming in our future in the next like you know 80 50 something like that years you know like there's we we really need to um to figure out how to how to make these kind of integral distinctions and work together if we're going to be able to adequately deal with any of the technology that's about to come online so even if we are really skillful and lucky you know we we get all this work done all we're all we're really doing is pushing the ball down the field a little bit and there's going to be a whole new set of unforeseen problems that you know that are going to come online even at that point so there's no done but just just thinking about all that and like bringing people into that kind of uh, a way of thinking about things i think will be will be really interesting so just more like any kind of like projects that we can come up with like that you know even if it seems you know, like more artistic and and unrelated. If we can we can figure out how to uh, use stuff like that too. You know, if you have skills that are that are more um, artistic or something like that, we need that as well. We need you know to to build art and and culture around this thing. So everybody's got some kind of talent or skill that they can bring to the table on this project. I think. And if you're not, and this this goes for people who might be listening to this audio too. If you're not sure, you know, contact me, and we can brainstorm about it. Because I think the more people who we can get active and passionate and feeling like this is their movement, you know, the the better it's going to be. So does anyone else have any kind of? Uh, ideas or questions or comments or anything they want to say let's go in uh let's go in turns just so we can kind of um make sure we get everybody's everybody's input on this why don't we start with uh newt gingrich yeah hey this is newt <laughs> uh, i'm more or less constantly focused on these topics and constantly generating material. So I'm quite open to any direction that might be useful in that. Like, uh, um, I write and make art and philosophize pretty much nonstop, and um, I'm open to doing it in any particular direction. So if there's a theme or if there's a kind of interview or if there's something that would be that other people think would be useful for me to focus on, I'm very happy to orient myself in a particular direction. I'm also um, am in a lot of different kinds of groups. Like I say, I'm on I'm an integral life moderator. I'm pretty close with Macintosh now. I, I'm in a lot of different zones. So that uh, my diplomacy in that sense might be useful for a number of things. For sure, man. And I really appreciate you saying that about how you're open to try to use your skills in in directions that we that you know we might find to be helpful or necessary or something. So you should uh, get get with me in the next couple of days, and maybe we can have a a brainstorming session, you and me, and we can figure out some stuff. Sure, and let's do it one time and help. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see. What about? I want to say I want to say your name right, brother. Is it Aljosa? Uh, Aljosa. It's uh, it's yeah, it's it's hard to pronounce. It's Aljosa. 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 Yeah, I speak with many. Yeah, that was closer. Yeah. Uh, usually, yeah. when I speak to um, uh, uh, forum people. Uh, even in my city, they have uh, trouble uh, with the name. I like yeah. I like being referred to as a foreign person. <laughs> that's that's something that, that that we don't get a lot in uh, in America. I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> everyone well, else has I, accents, I, right? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, I mean, usually I I usually say tourist or a foreign person when they are in our city. 
um, either are foreigners or tourists. That's how we call them. Yeah. Yeah. Now I wasn't here all 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 along because because I had some other stuff to do. What 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 was the topic right now? Oh, um, right now we were just uh, opening it up, kind of at the end, sort of going around, seeing if you have any extra questions or comments or ideas about um, how you might be able to. Uh, if you have any ideas about any of the topics that we that we talked about, or if you have any ideas about how you might want to get involved yourself. Just kind of go um, around and do yeah, it. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I mean, I I heard about the uh, talk about uh, uh, the religion, and I do think that uh, religion is important. But in terms of what I can do at this moment, is basically just uh, basically the same thing what I said before. Um, I can first I need to find uh, some people here in my local area and try to connect with them who are uh, integral informed and. Uh, I'm sure there are some things I can also do uh, with helping with the group, you know, maybe some video things or uh, start some talks around uh, these topics, uh, you know, things like that. Yeah, maybe man, that's I pretty think much the fact that you're same. making videos about the stuff, that in itself is already, like, um, really helpful. If uh, maybe you could make, um, maybe we could talk and after, you know, I make like a version of the the intro to our group, maybe um, we, we could work together and uh, you could make some videos making some of those distinctions in your language. And uh, Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm already using some of your stuff anyway, um, oh, because nice. it's really helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm obviously using a bit of my interpretations because I also need to translate and you don't really have an integral language in Slovenia. So I'm, ju I'm just doing it on the fly, you know, think about words, <laughs> whatever comes to my mind. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what I'm basically doing already, yeah. Well, great, man. If I can help with any of that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, if I have any uh, questions, I'll, I'll definitely, um, yeah, uh, ask for help. And we're going to get together and talk soon and see if we can, uh, see if I if I know anybody around your area who's in, who's integral. Yeah, I have a good amount of uh, integral connections through Facebook, so maybe we can find somebody cool. Sure, whoever helps. Thanks so much for coming, bud. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I mean, all of you, for, guys, you know, but especially, especially this fellow. <laughs> what about you, Kai? Um, I'm good. I. I have now more motivation for moving forward with the um, with the skills I'm, I was thinking about developing, and so I'll keep in touch with you about that. I hope I can be helpful in building the website. Yeah, let's definitely get together and and brainstorm about that project. And uh, yeah, I would definitely love to just spend some time with you and and uh, talk about that and get some of your per your perspective as a web page maker. Oh, cool. We already had some fun talking about systems and stuff, so I'm sure we can. Get some yeah, and thank you for your energy and pushing this project forward, David. It's fun to see uh, your creativity and your your energy with it. Oh, thanks so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Zach, how you doing, bud? Doing good. Hang in there. Oh okay. yeah, I'm uh, I'm uh, happy we've been able to have this good discussion here today. I think we've covered a lot of good, good topics, and I'm excited to see how this goes forward. I think probably for myself, I like focusing on the. I'm a lot better at communicating in writing than I am, like say over the phone or <laughs> in person, oftentimes. So I think that's probably where I want to put a lot of my energies into. So. Like kind of like what other people have said, if there's any ideas or things that like I like uh, doing proofreading and that sort of thing, so I'm always open for that sort of thing. Well, I've definitely um, really appreciated a lot of the work that you've done so far, um, in participating on the thread and in the threads and helping with peer review process on some of my work and. Um, I've really enjoyed our brainstorm about um, 
how we could how we could turn uh, turn those ideas into different forms. And I'm still down to uh, talk about that some more. Obviously, you know, we're all more busy with life stuff and don't have tons and tons of time to work on this. Is not as much as we'd like, but um, right. I really appreciate everybody for for taking the time and um, coming today to to talk about this stuff and to to be a part of this conversation and um, your care and passion about this movement and your willingness to to take time and energy to work on it. Uh, it means a lot to me, and uh, I'm really glad to to be working with all of you. Likewise. So let's see. Um, so we're going to be back in a in a couple weeks, and um, you know we can we can talk more then about what we have going. Hopefully, you know more people will listen to this. And they'll brainstorm, and maybe we could even start. I could even start to sort of um, initiate you guys into some of the basic uh, practices of some of the structure of collab. Maybe we could we could try like a, some practice rounds of that or something. But I think um, we can we can continue to make these productive conversations that are good for the the community, and we can also. Um, we can also use them as ways to kind of connect and get inspired to do to do more work. So I'm super excited about that. So um, let's see. It's been a couple hours. Is there anything that anyone else wants to say before we before we close it up? I think I covered it. All right. I think. Uh, I think that's good then. Thanks so much everybody for for coming and uh much love. Namaste. 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 Namaste.